Welcome to Subramani. This uh, video has not really been uh, caused by the 75.75% uh, uh, increase in the interest rate in the US. Uh, this was in the making anyway. So let me start. 1980 to 2022, uh, we saw a huge bull run in the bond markets of the uh, of US. Right, interest rates dropped from 18% to 1.8%. Even now, it's hovering around 3%. Right, we saw such a long bull run, uh, and uh, therefore, it was like uh, money has no cost. So that was quantitative easing. And now it is quantitative tightening. Money has a cost. People have to consider money as a cost. Remember, the price was paid by the uh, bondholders who were investing fresh. So if you were a retired person in the US and you were tackling inflation, your CDs were priced very low. Similarly, bank fixed deposits in India were not giving a real return. India, ha Indian numbers are still better. Our inflation is about seven and a half percent, and our bank rate or the ten-year GSEC is seven and a half percent. So we are not very badly off. The US is eight percent and three percent. So there is absolutely no connection. The US is much in a far more difficult situation. So when m money is free, what happens is you could just buy any asset. And it was you did not have to look at the other side called risk. You only had to say, oh, I have to buy in something and it will go up. So all assets went up. All the uh, equity shares prices went up. Uh, real estate also in US went up a little. It, it was a little wavy. It went up, came down, went up, came down. It was a little wavy. But the interest rate fall in the US was exactly like this. There were slight sporadic jumps, but largely it was uh, from 18 to 1.8. Yes, 1.83 or you know there was some fluctuation somewhere in between, but largely a one-way street of a bull run. One-way street of a bull run on interest rate meant that people did not have have to respect one full uh, cost of fact factor of production right so what are the factors of production you would say interest there is salaries there is capital uh, there is labor right so your one thing was completely taken out don't worry about interest interest rates will always be low so the whole generation which believed for 40 years that interest rates can't go up and inflation won't go up. now inflation is up therefore the fed is increasing rates so interest rates will go up will it go up to seven eight percent i don't know i don't think so because simply because the uh, in, uh, inflation will come down there is one more thing people react to seeing the worry rather than the worry itself so the uh, 75 basis point uh, uh, increase in interest rates in the us did not trigger a fall in india and may not create too much of a fall in the us because people were kind of expecting it now they'll say oh the worst is over uh, there won't be one more uh, 75 basis point uh, uh, hike in interest rates but hold your horses we don't know what is going to happen unless interest uh, unless inflation is controlled uh, interest rates could go up even further in the us so uh, free money is gone money will now have a price and people will have to pay for it right buying anything at any price you were right you you didn't have to worry about risk you didn't have to worry about cash flow you didn't have to worry about anything just buy and it would go up rents would go up right uh, it was fashionable to have a high cash burn. So you say, oh, this company is burning so much cash because cash was free. Remember, because one factor of production was removed completely. Uh, new startups were called unicorn and they never made money and right so some old people like me uh, kept wondering how can a company have a valuation when it is not making cash yes future it will make cash also understand some of the insurance companies etc have a way of accounting by which they look profitable but if there are claims uh, then there could be a problem but then that is how accounting happens in uh, insurance companies and how accounting happens in many of the unicorns is or oh, we are EBITDA positive to me that's a lie if I have uh, one rupee in the bank or if I have 100 rupees in the bank and I tell you I have 200 rupees that's a lie and if I uh, if I am saying I'm profitable and I'm only EBITDA positive which means after providing for depreciation interest taxation and amortizations if I'm not profitable then I'm not profitable right so the language will change so that will also happen which will mean uh, many startups which are not cash generating and who do not have enough cash to burn 
uh, for the next few months will struggle living so that means there will be mergers acquisition and uh, there will be many companies which will just close down the people will get acquired but those companies will get closed down right unless there is a visibility of cash they are not going to get funded so easily debt is anyway not available for startups because the failure percentage is very high um, the word EBITDA itself uh, raises a lot of uh, humor because uh, if you have not provided for interest, depreciation, taxation and amortization, today every asset is being called as a uh, client acquisition cost of cost of making the software. So if you capitalize everything and you amortize it and you say we are profitable before amortization to me, it does not look very sensible. So the market is going to punish such companies. Uh, they, the uh, lack of cash flow did not bother because uh, you could acquire employees promising them a high ESOP. So immaterial of whether you actually went to the ESOP stage, whether you did well, uh, whether the company got listed, people would just come and say, my salary is low, but I have a huge ESOP. These kind of uh, employee acquisition competition, which was going on, might take a hit and employees will have to now uh, accept lower wages or uh, if they want uh, if they want very good wages they may have to compromise on the brand where they are working or if they want stability they may have to compromise on salary so this is also going to happen uh, and I do think we are in the very early stages of a bad market we are not uh, if somebody tells you everything is in the price it may not be true some of the things may be in the price some of the things may not be in the price so when people can't believe that the market can go down further or they believe oh, oh see the market has gone up this could be a uh, uh, lame duck uh, theory they're saying oh everything is in the price right or a uh, dead cat bounce whatever you want to call it right it could be any of those things some things with the uh, pandemic or the covid taught us uh, will also come into play uh, like the hybrid model we will hire people from all over the world so which means your bay area your, your bay area new york delhi bangalore bombay noida uh, danapur uh, dehradun uh, baroda all of them could pay similar salaries and that means the uh, some of the power will shift from the landlords of the big cities to smaller towns where people will maybe build a bigger house if i have a nice uh, 2 bhk house in uh, dehradun i may add another room to it saying i will create this as my office will those salaries come down yes after a bit it will come down because somebody in dehradun will be available at 25 lakhs instead of 35 lakhs which i am currently paying i just picked up dehradun it could be baroda it could be salem it could be any such place so competition for people will happen so the bay area Area is going to compete with uh, New York, New York is going to compete with Bombay, Bombay is going to compete with Dehradun. Big cities will see uh, losing sheen in terms of uh, salaries and therefore rent and therefore high spending will not happen. The high, because the spending will get spread out very well that i think is very good for the indian economy because a uh, lot of money will move from uh, india to bharat and that is a very good thing to happen it, it could happen i'm not saying it will happen but i think that could happen um, positive cash flows uh, surviving uh, dividends uh, and uh, good return on roe roce uh, are all words which will become very important so positive cash flow a word which was forgotten by the industry by the by the investing community will come back the word risk will come back right so risk had gone on leave 10 years leave 13 years leave 15 years leave whatever it is now the risk is coming back right uh, the hybrid model is going to work but we do not know whether the hybrid model is going to be a great success if the hybrid model is a great success people will still travel but the amount of people traveling the number of people traveling will go down but however there could be meetings there could be gatherings there could be uh, uh, bonding meetings happening so there could be so your uh, will your airline industry suffer maybe maybe not it's still a little iffy uh, whom should we blame all uh, for all this? All of us have to be blamed. We had our own FOMO. We kept on buying. We said, oh, Netflix can never go down. Uh, Google can never go down. How can you live without Google? How can you live without Facebook? Well, people will learn to live some of the things and without some of those things. Uh, we loved kicking the can down the uh, path because we did not want to confront ourselves saying, oh my God, this is a problem. So the US still has 
uh, debt which is 300 uh, three and a half times its gdp 350 percent of its gdp is its debt so one percent change of interest rate means a three and a half percent cut in its growth right so that's not going to be very easy uh, but I can tell you one thing, it's not the end of the world, the world will live, it will be great, uh, good times make you money, bad times make you uh, learn things. So it's a great time to be learning and like they say, this too shall pass and uh, hopefully this too shall pass and quickly. Uh, will we come or will it be a quick sharp uh, reaction? I don't know. I don't know whether it's going to be a quick sharp reaction, I think it could be a longish uh, bear market to which we are not used to. All the best.